Have you heard that you can make thousands by starting a glamping business? Well, that is absolutely true, but it's going to take time and a lot of money if you do it properly. You would wanna do it properly because you're a business person and you want this to thrive for years to come. So go through the effort and do it right. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the 10 things that you need to do in order to start a glamping business the right way. All right, let's start with what is glamping and why would you wanna do it? So glamping is this newfangled term that the kids are using and it's glamorous camping. So glamping. So rather than a tent on the ground and having to use a common restroom facility, this kind of takes that idea and puts it on its head and creates a more luxurious experience and frankly, I think appeals to a lot more travelers. So glamping structures are things like domes. They can also be container homes. They can also be A-frames, tree houses, other super unique structures that tend to be very small and self-contained. Many of them can have bathrooms and small kitchens and just have great, great beds, linens, and just make for a very luxurious experience. So that is what glamping is. Now, why would you wanna enter into the glamping business? Well, if you do it right, the glamping business can cash flow anywhere from $1,000 a month to 5,000 plus a month if you do it right. So let's get into the 10 items that you have to do in order to start a glamping business the right way. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to conduct your market research. And within that, there are three different components. The first is looking at how much money can you actually make in the area that you're thinking about building your glamping business. Look at what your occupancy rate is going to be. That is, how booked will it be throughout the year? And here you want anywhere from 60 to 100%. A lot of times, this is the area where you're going to be profitable. Then you're going to need to look at your average daily rate. So on an average throughout the entire year, how much can you charge guests to stay for a single night? Now, if your glamping business is going to be seasonal, that is, it's going to be operational during certain parts of the year. For areas that are cold, for example, you may only to be up and running from, say, May to September or October. But if you're in a warmer climate, you can be operational year round and that will obviously affect your both occupancy and your average nightly rate. So factor that in as well. And super unique structures that are beautifully designed and super luxurious can charge anywhere from $300 to $700 a night. Okay, the next and perhaps the most important thing that you are going to have to do in order to conduct proper market research is zoning and and permitting. And the type of zone that you can build this type of glamping site is largely going to be either in a place that doesn't do zoning or in the agricultural zone. So you'll need to contact your city or your county to identify what zones are in place, what they mean and what type of structures that you can put up in them. You're also gonna wanna make sure that short-term rentals are legal in the place that you want to build your glamping site. Okay, the next most important piece of research to do is to look at your staffing. Can you hire a cleaner, handyman, and can you get construction people out to build your glamping site? Now, generally, the more rural the location, the tougher it might be because the fewer people might be living there who do the kind of work that you need them to do. So you'll want to talk to your realtor, talk to friends and family, anybody local, do a search on Yelp, do a search on Facebook to make sure that you're gonna be able to find the type of help that you need to help start and run your glamping business. Okay, so the next thing that you are going to have to do, you've done your initial market research, the next thing to do is your business plan and your marketing plan. Now, initially, I wouldn't spend too much time doing this because there are resources online that you can use that can get this done pretty quickly. And I would use ChatGPT. I will link here a video that I've done on how to use ChatGPT to run your entire Airbnb business. But you can ask ChatGPT to write a business plan for you for a glamping site in this location. It's going to have these types of structures. It will be open from this season to that season. It's going to offer XYZ amenities and anything else that you want ChatGPT to know about your potential glamping business in order for it to spit out your business plan. Now, this will be a draft that you can iterate on as you learn more about the type of business that you are going to build, because as I go through the next steps, you are going to get more and more refined in terms of what your business is going to be 
based on everything else that I'm gonna go through. Okay, and you can do the same thing with your marketing plan. You can ask ChatGPT to please write a marketing plan that includes social media marketing for a 10 structure glamping site. You know, half will be domes, half will be A-frames. There will be a hot tub and fire pit for each unit. Give as much detail as you can and ask it to produce this for you. And again, this will be a draft that you can iterate on, but it will give you a good idea of the types of ads you can run, the posts you can make, the hashtags that you can use, and this will just get your wheels turning. So that's the second step, your business plan and your marketing plan, and let's go on to step number three. Step number three, super critical, financing. Here there's really kind of three, I guess, options. You can go the traditional financing route, and that is if you plan to buy a home that is on existing acreage where you're gonna build your sites, you can get a traditional mortgage and maybe even a low money down mortgage. And if you go that route, you may not be able to fund the construction with that loan, so you may need to get a construction loan on top of that, which I'll, I'll go into more detail next, but you can do a construction loan or you can be, bring cash in order to build those glamping structures. The next option would be either a business loan or a commercial loan. And these would be construction loans plus acquisition. Now, the benefit of doing a commercial acquisition and construction loan is that you can buy the property and build all of your structures all with the same loan. This tends to be temporary financing, usually for about a year, but they can give you no cost extensions until you your project is done depending on the bank. And there is a layer of protection that comes with using this product because the bank is going to say, what is your construction plan? So they're gonna require by a certain time, certain things to be done and they will pay out as those things are done. So they will bring in an inspector who will look to see were those items done? Were they done properly? And are you ready for the next phase? And if the answer to all of that is yes, then they will cut a check and it will go directly to your builder and you don't even have to be involved in that process. So that's why you might wanna do that, especially if this is your first time doing this type of project, you'll have that added protection from the bank. A business loan won't quite work the same way. You'll kind of have to manage all of that. So that is why I really wouldn't recommend doing a business loan if you're a first timer, because you're just not familiar with the process of ground up construction. And then the third would be to use private money or a hard money lender. And this would be kind of similar Similar to using a business loan in that you would really be on your own in terms of managing the construction and doing the draws and making sure that the milestones are being hit, but it is certainly an option. And if financing a glamping business is something that you want me to go in more depth, please let me know down below and also hit like so that I know to make that type of video. Okay, the fourth step in starting a glamping business is to buy the property and do the due diligence. So before you sign on the dotted line in terms of buying the home, you're going to want to do a due diligence phase. And that is essentially making sure that you can build whatever you want to build on that particular property. So you're going to have to get some feasibility studies uh, of the land to make sure that you can build on it. If you're going to add in a septic tank to capture the sewage, you're going to have to do what's called a perk test. You're going to have to know whether you can tap into the city or county's electric or even plumbing for water or you're gonna to have to do a well. And you're gonna to have to know whether you can do all of those things. So I would recommend at least a 60 day due diligence period where you're doing all of that research to make sure that you can properly build your structures on that particular piece of land. Okay, so once you do that, you are going to wanna to get all of that paperwork together in order to submit your permits to your city or to your county. So as soon as you buy the home because you've passed all of the tests that you needed to do, you'll wanna get all of that paperwork over and submit your permit application so that then you are ready to build as quickly as possible. Okay, so then the next phase is to start building your infrastructure. So if you needed to put in a septic tank, put that in. If you needed to dig for a well, do that. If you need to pull electric from the city or county, do all of that. And obviously you're not doing it, but your builder is doing it. They're gonna have to do all of this preparation infrastructure work before a foundation can be laid. But once that's done, they'll lay the foundation. And then the next step is to either build your structure 
structures if you're doing ground up construction or to buy and install your structures. Now they make some prefab amazing structures like domes, mirror cabins, even container homes are prefab structures. Now the benefit of doing a prefab structure is it's gonna save you time on the build. You're gonna have to do all of the regular infrastructure you would have to do for a ground up construction but once that's done, you can just kind of plop this thing on and keep it moving. So that is certainly a viable option. The, the cons are it doesn't really save you any money and you can't really customize it. It's not super flexible. And the reason these, these companies exist is because they can make you know millions of the same thing. They're very efficient at it. So they can't really do a lot of customization, but as long as you are good with what they build, then it's a great, great option. So you have either built or bought and installed your structures and now you're ready for the next step. Okay, so the sixth step is to furnish your structures. They're all built and get your landscaping done. Now the landscaping is gonna have to look beautiful. It's part of the experience. You're gonna have to do things like install your hot tub, create a fire pit, put down mulch, whatever it is. But you're gonna have to spend money on this because in all likelihood, this is not gonna be able to come out of your construction loan. So you're gonna have to bring cash or put this on a zero interest credit card or get a business loan. You're gonna have to figure out an additional way to finance. And I would budget anywhere from 20 to $50,000 for your landscaping. And I would highly recommend working with either a super pro landscaper or a landscape architect to draw up that plan for you and execute it. All right, so you're furnished, you're landscaped, you are almost ready to go. Now you're gonna have to set up your listing on Airbnb and VRBO, set up your smart pricing. I use Price Labs, it's great. Set up your property management software. I use Guesty, it's fine. It has a little glitches, but I kind of think it's the best one out there because it has the most functionality. And then you're gonna establish your website with all of the amazing photos that you get of your your listings once they are done and getting into the, the next step, execute your marketing plan. So buy the ads, do the posts. I'm going to play with getting the services of local social media influencers who are in the travel space in my local area to come and stay and do posts, videos, things like that to just generate more buzz and generate more excitement about my places. All right, so you've got all of this ready to go. At the same time, now you're not necessarily doing these things sequentially, it, at least these last few steps, you're doing them at the same time. Like once your places are ready to go and your landscaping is done, you're gonna want to hire your cleaner and make sure that your cleaner knows how many places you have, what your check-in and check-out times are, what are all of the tasks that your cleaner has to do. Is your cleaner going to be also cleaning any of the outside of the property, like including the hot tub or fire pit if you have those available. And if your cleaner's not gonna be doing that, you're gonna have to hire somebody to take care of that. So you're gonna get all of these things done. Your marketing plan, your listing copy, all of that is ready to go. You've hired your cleaner, now hit publish and go live and congratulations, you are done. Now, if you were reading in between the lines of this video, you will understand that this process is going to take anywhere from two to three years and it's going to cost a lot of money. But the benefit is you're gonna have super high cash flow and you are gonna have a business that you can run in perpetuity. You're not gonna get shut down by the county and people can't harm your business by complaining to the local authorities because you've gotten all your proper permits and you are fully legal and ready to go. So you have no regulatory risk and to me, that is worth it. There are lots of people who go out and just throw up a tent and do it off grid. And sometimes they're successful, sometimes not. I know someone who got shut down by the county after a year of operations. And while it was worth it for that person, now this person has all of this infrastructure that can't be used. So what are you gonna do, take it down and put it up somewhere else? You absolutely can, but you know, I think it's far better to just do it right. And that way you have a viable business. If you wanna become an Airbnb host, please see the referral link down below. I also have recommendations for all of my favorite items to furnish your Airbnb. Those links are down below. If there's anything more that you want to learn about starting a glamping business, let me know. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.